Welcome to St. Matthew Online. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. This is the time of the church in the liturgical calendar. Go and do as Jesus and His Spirit leads. Make sure to gather your communion elements as we will be celebrating communion today. And stay with us until the end to learn about what is happening in our community. God bless you. Lord, we all thank you that we are able to be taught and teach your ways. We ask for you to let us have faithfulness in you, even though we are not together in these times. Lord, we praise you for your comforting and your steadfast love. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome church. My name is Ryan Taylor. I'm the worship director here at St. Matthew. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. If you're worshiping with us live during the premiere on uh, July 19th, then after this, uh, this recording, we have a special opportunity for you to get on a Zoom call and ask some questions with our new pastoral candidate, uh, Rustin Comer. Check your e-news for the details on that and uh, we'd love to see you in there and get to know Pastor Rustin. Would you bow with me? God, thank you for being so big that you can meet us out on the grandest mountaintops as well as, you know, our prayer closets and our own living rooms. God, would you come and draw near to us and let us receive your spirit through the worship this morning, through your word and through the fellowship digitally as we connect with believers all around the world, Lord. We love you, God, and we praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please worship with us? Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it bring. Can't deny your name cannot 
be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. I see that today we're going to be reading from the Psalms. Uh, Seymour? Yes, Pastor Tim. It's Psalms. No, there's a P at the beginning. P Psalms. Well, it would seem that that's the way that it is, but that's not really how you pronounce it. You just say Psalms. You don't pronounce the P. Hmm, that seems strange to me. It's okay, Seymour. Go with it. It's, it's the way that it works. Okay, well... Anyway, I love the Psalms. There you go, you got it. Well, I love today especially that our Psalm is going to encourage us to see that God is full of compassion for us. That God is always looking at us tenderly and with love, especially when we struggle or when we goof up. Because you know, we all do that. And it's just so comforting to me to know that God is always looking at me with love and compassion and not being all angry and mean. Well, that's true. And it's a wonderful gift to know that that's who God is. God is a God of love and compassion and mercy for us always. That God wills for us to live in a way that glorifies God and that, that is gracious to the world around us. But God also knows how we can struggle sometimes. But God always loves us and looks upon us with compassion. And he shows us that so wonderfully in Jesus. I'm so glad for that. And it comforts my heart. Amen. A reading from Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may say, see it and be put to shame because you lord have helped me and comforted me good morning to our saint matthew community and to all those of you who are joining us uh, through our youtube channel for our worship service this morning you'll notice i hope as you have been on this journey with us that 
from time to time, we are stepping into the Psalms along the way. This is a great place for us to go in our biblical tradition, especially in times like these that are so fraught with so many different kinds of conflicting emotions. The Psalms are so powerful for us because they really give voice to the human experience. They are places where lament is poured out freely in the, in the trust and in the confidence that God can handle it. But they're also places where confidence and hopefulness and a sense of the wonder of who God is and how God is present to us in the midst of our most challenging moments is very present as well. Today, we are in Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17. And it begins with some pleas. The pleas that, that God, that Yahweh, would teach us God's ways. The ways that we come to understand in Jesus are always ways that lead to life. Life being renewed for us. Life being renewed and restored for our creation. Life that is so powerful that it is eternal. So there's a plea. Teach me your ways, O, o God, the ways of life, so that I can walk in, in that truth. And then a plea for an undivided heart. The only reason that we would plea for an undivided heart is because in the truth of who God is, we recognize how badly divided our hearts really are. Now again, we have to stop for a minute and say this is not a biological description of the human heart and its various chambers and functions and things like that. The heart is really the core, biblically speaking, of the human person, of, of the integrity of who we are. And the reality is, the psalmist asks for an undivided heart because the psalmist is honest enough to recognize the dividedness of his heart. This rings true for us. We all know this in large ways and in small ways, how divided our hearts can be. It's not only the big stuff like how we constantly have to search our hearts to know whether we're seeking after God's will and way and purpose after, or whether we're seeking after the life that God intends for us and for God's creation or our own selfish and narrow self-interest. It's not only the awareness of a divided heart that, that understands the difference between right and wrong and still too often chooses the wrong. But it's the subtle things too. It's unpacking how the way that I view the world, the way that I view my faith is affected by my social location and, and by the culture into which I was born and how so often I can read that stuff back into the faith rather than allowing uh, this faith tradition, this beautiful, rich tradition that we have as followers of Jesus to inform and to critique those particular contexts. We plead for an undivided heart because we recognize how fickle and divided the human heart really is. I'm speaking for myself here, but I know this to be very, very true. And I can imagine that it resonates with you as well. So a psalm that begins with a plea to know God's ways, to have an undivided heart, then turns as is so often the case, to thankfulness. You know, many people that comment or reflect on the Psalms want there to be a very linear progression. They're sometimes confused or troubled by the fact that the Psalms kind of seem to bounce back and forth emotionally. I think that's what gives them their power because isn't that the way it is for all of us? Aren't we really all over the map when it comes to how it is that, that we uh, live in the world and in our relationships and especially in our relationship with God? So I'm not at all troubled. In fact, I'm comforted by the fact that after the plea comes this, this deep thankfulness. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart and glorify your name forever. For when God puts us together, when God heals our heart, when God teaches us God's ways, then we are able to sing those great praises. The psalm goes on to reflect a confidence in the great love of God towards us that God has literally delivered us from the pit of death, that even though 
there are times when the world seems against us. And in these strange and troubling times, perhaps we have felt this way uh, more often. The arrogant rise up against me, O God. A band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O God, are gracious and full of compassion. An affirmation of who God is in the midst of trouble and strife and discord and violence, there is an affirmation that our God is a God that is full of compassion and is gracious. We sometimes think that there's only one narrative line about who God is that runs throughout Scripture. When in fact the truth is, when we look at our Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, there are many lines of texts that are talking about different ways of understanding who God truly is. We who follow Jesus confess and believe that God is ultimately fully revealed in what we see and hear and experience in Jesus. And indeed, there the affirmation comes that our God is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. This is who God truly is. Not an angry, wrathful, detached, vengeful, capricious God who is just waiting to visit judgment on people. Not a God who is detached and uncaring for what happens in this world that we are a part of. But a God who took on flesh to come and reveal the depth of His love and to embrace us through the cross of Jesus so that we might see God's power made perfect in the seeming weakness of the cross. The compassion and the grace and the mercy of God poured out for us. And then there's a plea that comes to us. In verse 16, Turn to me and have mercy on me and give strength to your servant. A perfect word for the times in which we find ourselves. As we affirm our desire to have an undivided heart, to learn God's ways, as we wrestle with and reckon with the challenging moments that are a part of this season of our life and the experiences that are a part of it, as we affirm the graciousness and compassion and love and mercy and steadfastness of God, we ask God to give us strength Strength so that we can persevere in continuing to proclaim this gracious and merciful God and a love that engages everyone. This is exactly the word that we need to hear and it is exactly the word that the world needs to hear from us today. To know that no matter how difficult the times are, no matter how how it is that we may struggle in the midst of it, how divided our hearts may be, that there is this gracious and compassionate God who has enfolded us and who has reached out to us in Christ and who embraces us and who offers us strength for the journey so that we can hold on and so that we can persevere as the psalm ends saying, because you, Lord, have helped and comforted me. These are wearying times. My own strength cannot get me through. But the strength of God can and does. We can persevere because of who God is and because of the fullness of who God has been revealed to be in Jesus. So take heart. If this has been a tough week for you, if this has been a tough uh, several weeks for you as we've been at this shelter in place for a long time now, take heart and take courage in the compassion and in the love and in the mercy and in the presence of God who is faithful and who will lead us through. And let that be our witness to the world of the grace and the mercy and of the compassion of God that surrounds and strengthens and comforts us. Let's offer that as the gift that God has for our world. Amen. I have to believe He sees my dark
Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, we look forward to times of refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for those facing disappointment at canceled plans, lost business and jobs, and all the uncertainty and fears related to the coronavirus. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family now torn apart by our fear-filled and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to the celebration of Holy Communion, where we affirm and delight and celebrate in the graciousness and the compassion of our God, who gathers us together as one people, feeds us, renews us, and comforts us so that we might continue to be his hands and his heart and his voice in the world. Please join me in a word of prayer. O God of grace and mercy, come and be with your servants as we gather around these gifts of bread and wine. Strengthen and equip us for lives of love and service for the sake of your kingdom and in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the meal had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's life and death and resurrection and his continuing presence in our midst. I invite you now to join your hearts and your voices with mine as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you now to share in Holy Communion with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Open your hearts to receive God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in all things fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are so glad that you were able to join us this morning. We will be back again here next week, so make sure to hit that YouTube subscribe button to get notified of any future videos. St. Matthew is a neighborhood church making a world of difference, and the only way we are able to do that is through your generous giving. We have three easy ways where you can set up your own giving plan, either by visiting our website at www.stmatthew.org slash give, or you can set up a reoccurring bill pay through your financial provider. Lastly, you can give with your cell phone right now by texting GIVE to 925 925- 854-4402 and following the prompts. We would love to see you worshiping with us online. Take a picture of you joining us online and tag St. Matthew and use the hashtag SMLC Church Online in your post. You can also like us on Facebook at St. Matthew Lutheran Church or you can follow us on Instagram at St. Matthew WC. Links to our social media are also in the description of this video. St. Matthew's Layette Ministry supports new families through yearly donations to the county hospital. Please visit our website or check your e-news for a complete list of items needed to support this vital ministry. Donations can be dropped off outside the church office, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., Monday through Friday, this week and next week. We hope to create over 200 Layette gifts for newborns in need. St. Matthew is holding a food drive to support the Monument Crisis Center. Please check out our social media and online news for current needs. Drop off your food to paper bag donations at church in the bin or the boxes labeled Monument Crisis Center, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
Want to stay up to date with everything going on at St. Matthew? Text St. Matt to 22828 to sign up and have our weekly newsletter delivered to your inbox every Friday. College, high school, and middle school are meeting outdoors now during the summer. For all the information, check out our St. Matthew Connect page under Teens to find out the latest information on meetings and times. Again, thank you for joining us online this Sunday. Now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once there was a monotone angel who wanted to sing in the Christmas choir, sitting on a cloud he would practice, trying to make his voice go higher. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Seymour! Yes, Pastor Tim. I'm trying to get ready for my sermon here. I've got to run my notes. I can't be listening to you. Have you been watching Christmas Hallmark movies with Mimi again? Uh, I played the fifth on that. Come on, man. I'm trying to study. I got, I got, I've got to do this preparation. So just kind of tuck back down into your shell and give me some quiet so I can get my work done here. I've got, got a thing to record here, okay? Okay. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in ex Oh, that song is stuck in my head. Seymour. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Gonna lay down my burdens. Down by the riverside.